Hey everyone, it's Fitz with The Daily Delivery. I hope you're doing well. I am doing great. And today we're going to talk about some new rules coming to college football next season. The NCAA has made some nice little tweaks, some things that I think needed to be done, and some things I'll be very curious to see how they play out. And we start with one of the rules that I've really had problems with the most throughout college football. They didn't really address the rule itself, but the targeting rule now has a layer of appeal. If a player would get a second half targeting penalty, they'd have to sit out the rest of that game and the first half of the next game. And now there's an appeal process with review that could mean the player doesn't have to miss that next game. We'll see how that actually works in reality. Also, faking injuries. One of the worst things that's happened to college football are coaches that direct players to kind of just drop to the ground to stop the opposing offense's kind of rhythm and you know slow down the game a little bit. There really isn't much to be done in game because how do you know he's not really injured? But you can now go back in post game review. The conference can look at these things and decide if the player and coach directed a fake injury to interrupt the game and then assess a penalty, which is also vague and how they will handle that later on down the road. Kenny Pickett, congratulations to the Pitt quarterback. You now have your own rule because you faked a slide. You faked surrendering yourself in the ACC championship game against Wake Forest. And of course, you didn't slide and ran 50 some yards for a touchdown. Naughty, naughty. In fact, K-State had this done to them by TCU a few years ago, and it should have always been an unsportsmanlike penalty, but now they've codified it in the rules to say it is indeed a penalty if you are a quarterback and you fake your slide because the quarterback is allowed to slide, surrender themselves, and players cannot then make contact so as those players pulled up, Pickett tucked the ball and kept running. Ah, not good. Not good at all. Also, blocking below the waist is going to be clamped down on a little bit to make sure it happens within the tackle box. I'm a little frustrated by the, the vagueness of that tackle box. Sometimes it's skinny. Sometimes it's wide. We'll see how officials really apply it. I'm a little worried about this rule. This just seems like something an official can kind of change the momentum of a game by taking a you know, kind of borderline call and turning it into a big penalty on the offense. We'll see how that plays out. Finally, defensive holding. It's still a 10-yard penalty, but now it'll come with a first down. So don't be holding out there. You're going to give your opponent a first down. Uh, and I think uh, we've seen officials kind of waver in between calling a holding and interference. Now the holding will have a little bit more bite to it. We'll see how all these rules play out as the season proceeds in 2022. But for the most part, I like what the NCAA has addressed.